So you had a great presentation just a few minutes ago uh, in the Wheel Rail Interaction Conference about what BART is doing to transition from uh, cylindrical wheels to conical wheels. And people have been hearing about this for a long time. What's well, the big deal? <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there's a lot of... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to consider when you do something like that. Uh, you've had a 40-year history of, of this same match, this bond of this cylindrical wheel, and the rail has adopted that pattern as well now. So if we're going to modify the wheels, we need to take a real close look at modifying the rail as well. So getting that profile right is um, something that we really are focusing now on, on the M&E side. Um, I'll let Ben speak for the wheel side. Sure. Yeah, so on the, in the same sense, really the issue has to do with the cost of maintenance and the ride quality and the experience of our customers. So uh, over time, the system has grown unbearably noisy in our tunnels and our aerial structures and the noise that we produce to our surrounding customers. And we're just not able to keep up with the grind. And, and the noise comes essentially from the corrugation. And corrugation can be corrected if it's ground. But we're just unable, really, from an organization to address that at the level that we need to. So we feel that going to this modified tapered profile will allow us to have much slower corrugation growth, which will reduce the noise. It'll reduce our maintenance costs and, and really be a much better fit moving forward as our ridership continues to grow. Um, and so we, yeah, we think it's the best decision. Did, did this come as a surprise to you? you know, once, the stu once the studies were done, once you determined that BART is you know, going to go to um, conical wheels or have more tapered wheel, did it surprise you that you were going to eliminate noise and reduce corrugation and improve maintenance? Um, you know, it's inevitable um, when you have a flat wheel and all of that surface area, you're going to have two-point contact in the flange area. And uh, going into it, I knew that a conical wheel would help. But like other transit agencies have experienced, making that change, if you don't do it cor uh, properly, um, you know, it can, it can be uh, risky. Yep. So we're taking the steps to make sure that this, uh, this transition is done properly, for sure. Between our wheel wear, uh, wearing, wheels wearing out and wheels needing to be recut or reprofiled, uh, we touch just about every wheel in the fleet. So we don't, we don't replace every wheel in the fleet in a year, but we do get an opportunity to cut um, or to touch and to cut uh, each wheel. And that's why uh, it just made sense to, to say, look, if we can transition within a year, operationally that's the easiest thing we don't otherwise we would have to specially not cut certain wheels or not convert wheels which would mean we'd have to have multiple cutter heads set up to different profiles we'd have to schedule when a car could come in and when a car shouldn't come in for for reprofile so by um, by just getting the confirmation that it wasn't going to be detrimental to our operation in any way or unsafe or um, I, but it, it made the most sense from the from the vehicle side. On the on I think on the maintenance and engineering side of the house, uh, it it just means that the grinding program needs to not be delayed in any way because once we pull that trigger to modify all the cars, they're going to get modified in about a year. Yeah.